Zotero is a powerful software for storing and managing academic literature. It lets you download scientific publications directly from publisher's website and store and organize them on your computer. It becomes a much more powerful way of building your literature database than simply saving PDFs to a local folder. Zotero has a pretty simple interface that looks like this. Every publication that you upload to Zotero shows up as an item in your library with all its metadata. On the left, you have a panel that lets you organize publications into custom collections. You can think of these as folders. The powerful thing is that you can add a single publication into multiple collections. And on the right, you will see metadata of each individual item. And this is where you can create a more fine grained organization of academic literature using custom tags. In this video, I will show you how I create organization in my Zotero database through collections and through tags. So let's dive into each one of them. Let's start with organizing by collections. So the most straightforward way to organize collections is to create folders that will contain literature on a very general topic. You can think about one collection that stores all literature on reinforcement learning, one collection that stores all research on fluid dynamics, etc. But such a high level organization is too broad to be useful. And if I had only one folder where I store all papers that did reinforcement learning, this wouldn't be of much use in terms of later retrieving a specific publication. That's why I create a much more fine grained structure inside each collection by creating sub collections. Think of it as folders sitting inside the main folder. And there I would create many, many categories and try to be as descriptive as possible in naming those sub collections. I might, for example, have a separate storage for reinforcement learning done for flow control, or I might have a category for all literature that used reinforcement learning in a fluid dynamics simulation. I might also sort by different types of reinforcement learning algorithms. For example, I might separate single agent from multi agent reinforcement learning or store literature on hierarchical reinforcement learning. Notice that Zotero allows you to add a single literature item to many sub collections. So an item that used reinforcement learning for flow control using multi agent reinforcement learning can be located in two sub collections. And my advice here is to create as few high level collections as possible. Having too many of them will make searching for a specific publication much more difficult. Notice that I have just a handful of main categories, but then I create many sub collections inside each category. I also have one high level collection that stores literature that is most relevant to a project or a manuscript that I'm currently working on. And I simply call this collection, my paper writing literature review. And inside I would have a sub collection whose name starts with the year in which I started working on that project. And notice that adding an item to a specific projects collection does not remove it from its category. For example, I might have a paper from the data analysis category, but I can also add it to the current research project. If I know that this publication will be very important in my current work, it can simply be present in multiple collection collections. And this way of organizing literature comes from this great book called building a second brain. And Tiago Forte recommends organizing directly for a specific project because it saves time on retrieving information and creates a handy bubble of all the necessary literature to help you push your work forward. And in his, in his book, uh, he says, we want to avoid organizing methods that are overly rigid and prescriptive. The best way to organize your notes is to organize for action according to the active projects you are working on right now. Consider new information in terms of its utility, asking how is this going to help me move forward one of my current projects. 
I then have a collection that would store literature that is crucial for me in developing my long-term research vision. Uh, for example, when I was applying for postdoc positions, I would read papers coming from specific research groups and needed to have them in one location so that I can quickly make connections with the research done by that specific group and my past research. But the most powerful subcollection I have here, however, is this one. So there I save literature that I consider useful for building my research statement when applying for professorship positions. And this subcollection lets me store the most cutting edge research that links with the vision that I have for starting my own research lab someday. And I will then create extra notes in Zotero attached to those items to guide me on what research paths are needed next, starting from what this particular publication showed. And I also have one more uh, sub-collection here, which is called Open Source Education, where I store literature that helps me develop my educational materials. If you're currently a PhD student, you might also want to have one more collection that stores other people's PhD dissertations. And having many dissertations in one place can help you in structuring your own theses. For example, if you're curious how do people typically do X, you can quickly peek into a few dissertations and check that. When I was writing my dissertation, I was very curious how do people typically write dissertation abstracts? And specifically, what do people say to signal the novelty of their PhD work? I could then open a dozen dissertations in the similar field to mine and look for similarities in how do people describe their novel research. And finally, I also have a collection that stores literature organized by specific authors. So those are always the most important researchers in my field whose work I often go back to and I want to have their publications in one place. Uh, for example, during my PhD, it was very useful to have sub-collections that store all papers written by my advisors. Um, there's also, this is also where I store my own publications, simply to have them all in one place, as I often need to go back to my past work to check how we did something. Now, Zotero, of, co of course, allows you to search your whole database uh, based on an author. So this is also how you might find all publications uh, of a specific person. But I find that it's more handy if I have the sub collection ready and I don't need to spend time using the search function. Moreover, if you want to connect your Zotero database with ResearchRabbit to look for papers similar to all research work uh, done by a specific author, it also helps to have that sub-collection ready. Now let's quickly move to organizing the Zotero database by tags. So I have a small fixed set of tags that I use, which interestingly do not organize my database by research topics or fields. And for this, I use collections or sub-collections, uh, but tags let me attach a different type of information to literature items in my database. Now, the single most important tag that I have is called red. Every time I've actually read a given publication, I mark it as red. This lets me track my progress in getting familiar with the literature of a specific field. And I also have a tag to read next, which I assign only to publications which I picked into. And for some reason, I've decided that I absolutely need to read the whole thing. I use this tag very sparingly though, because in the end, any item in my collection should be looked into, right? Otherwise there's no point adding it to Zotero. But this to read next tag lets me flag certain publications as being my top priority. Next, I have two interesting tags called well-written and badly written. I'm very passionate about getting better in my academic writing. And whenever I read a publication, I pay special attention to how well it's been written. I then try to replicate certain strategies of clearer academic writing in my own work. 
But I also try to avoid pitfalls that some authors fall into, which make their writing much less accessible. So these two tags help me look for inspiration when I'm writing my own manuscript and have helped me develop my uh, clearer communication over the years. Next, I have uh, useful for my work versus not useful. And these tags are especially helpful once I'm in the project-based subcollection. If a paper has been flagged as useful for my work when working on a specific manuscript, I might want to return to this paper more frequently. And I definitely cite it in my work. I have three tags that tell me a little more uh, what type of publication this is. So I have big deal paper, for example, can be assigned to publications that are widely recognized by the community to be very important in moving a field forward. Those would typically be publications that have received many citations and are recognized as great work. The tag review tells me that an item is a review paper as opposed to an original contribution. And finally, the tag scoop uh, flags papers that scooped my research work. While this is a bit of a downer, it's actually a very useful tag because I really need to know and remind myself about uh, publications that did something that I was also working on. For example, I might absolutely want to cite papers flagged as scoop in my next publication to show that I'm aware of the situation and to make a reference to work that is so close to my work. And lastly, I have a tag called reproduced some results, uh, which reminds me of the research work done by others that I reproduced myself. So that reminds me that somewhere there, I might must have a GitHub repository or a piece of code that reproduces a particular result. Now, beware that by default, Zotero tags items based on available keywords. And if you want to have your own fixed set of tags and nothing else, you can go to settings and uncheck this option. So this way Zotero won't be messing up your own tagging system. Now the tags that I have provide a nice roadmap within each collection or sub collection. Uh, for example, within my paper writing literature review, I have a project that I'm currently working on and I might have a publication there that I can see is flagged with four tags. So I know I've read it. I know that it's well written. It's a big deal paper in the field and I marked it as useful for my work. So seeing an item like this lets me know that I need to be returning to this publication often as I work on my current project. And if I open this publication, I might have uh, more detailed notes written inside. I might have important sections highlighted. And this tag structure helps me decide which publications to cite in my manuscript. So Zotero is an overall a very simple software to learn, but is a real game changer in helping you perform research efficiently. So I hope that Zotero helps you in your research journey and your academic career. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. You can also check out this previous video where I discuss how to stay on top of academic literature effectively and see you next time.